So I'd like to draw some attention, folks, to what's going on with Project 2025. And they've got a document out there that is called The Mandate for Leadership, The Conservative Promise, they call it. And there's some pretty scary stuff in here. I've read the prologue. There's someone else that is on X who's put together a series of analysis. Her name is Emily Galvin Almanza. She operates Partners for Justice, which she says is breaking the cycle of poverty and criminalization in America. But some pretty scary stuff out there. So I'm going to read you her analysis. And then I've read, as I mentioned, the prologue. So I'll tell you a little bit about what's there. And I think the main takeaway from this, folks, is that when you understand what they're trying to do, it's, it's what they don't say that's incredibly scary to me. What they're not willing to print is what's scary. And I think that you can draw those conclusions from this analysis. So right off the bat here, folks, she says, predictably, this is a document full of states' rights claims, but true to form, there is very little left of the states when it comes to a Trump criminal legal system. Generally, the Constitution reserves criminal law to the states, allowing localities to create criminal accountability as they see fit. But under a Trump regime, small government just means no EPA or Medicare and a huge expansion of DOJ's criminal division power. Now, just to give you an idea of what they want to do, so they're tearing down all of the agencies, they're building up the Department of Justice, and one of those agencies that they want to tear down, as you might imagine, is the FBI. Now, in this document, they believe that the FBI should answer to the Attorney General at the Department of Justice. Now, in reality, the FBI actually answers to both the Attorney General as well as the Director of National Intelligence. That's how it's set up now. They want all of the power of the FBI to go to the Department of Justice and to kind of underscore how much control they're trying to take over the FBI, they want every lawyer that works at the FBI that gives them guidance on what they do, they want them all fired, and they want all of that guidance to come directly from the Department of Justice. So folks, it's, it's really like they're creating a version of the Gestapo is what they're looking to do. And she says that a primary target of the DOJ, the discretion and decision making of local prosecutors. Prosecutorial discretion is part of the foundation of our legal system, the idea that the people elect their prosecutor and can elect or not elect a person whose judgment they agree with when it comes to what to focus on when it comes to criminal prosecution. The Trump DOJ will basically override local voters and prosecutors, bringing federal charges where they deem states not punitive enough. And that's page 553 of the document. And they want to do stuff like this, folks. Ron DeSantis has already done this in 2022. Politico has got this article that says DeSantis suspended him from his job. He wants voters to put him back in office. Tampa Democrat Andrew Warren has been locked in a protracted legal battle with the Republican governor after he was suspended from his elected position of state attorney in 2022. So they're taking someone who's elected, firing them, and then he's putting his own state attorney in there. And you're going to see that happen, not just in Florida, as we've seen, but this is going to be happening all over the nation. And it's it's undermining who people have elected as their, their state attorney, obviously. But it's what they're going to do. And she says that somehow they're also going to make, do everything they can to make sentences harsher and increase utilization of the death penalty. They're also going to double down on the war on drugs, prosecuting interstate drug cases much more harshly. And by interstate drug trade, they also mean abortion pills. So now the war on drugs is going to include abortion pills. And they'll also take election integrity out of the hands of the Civil Rights Division and put it in the Department of Justice's criminal division. That's on page 563. So again, it's all of this power being centered with the Attorney General and the Department of Justice, folks. It, it is going to be a modern-day version of the Nazi Gestapo. And she says also in Project 2025, they want to go even further than that. They don't even, farther than banning abortion, they want to make sure that doctors don't even know how to do abortions. 
Specifically, this doc makes the Department of Health and Human Services responsible for ensuring that training for doctors, nurses, doesn't include anything about abortion. And that's on page 485 to 486. Can you imagine that? They want to make sure that nurses and doctors don't know how to perform abortions. I mean, that's exactly where we're heading here, folks. And she says, oh, also the Department of Justice is going to be the abortion police and go after anyone mailing abortion pills. And in the prologue, folks, when I read it, I found this, and they're quoting German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he called something, he came up with this term, cheap grace, which basically means publicly promoting one's own virtue without risking any personal inconvenience. And they say, they use this analysis here to try to say this is what the um, socialist elites, also known as Democrats, are doing. They say, indeed, the only the only direct impact of open borders on pro-open borders elites is that the constant flow of illegal immigration suppresses the wages of their housekeepers, landscapers, and busboys. Right? So the more people that are coming in, the, the, the game is the more people coming in, the rates and the wages stay low. I mean, how insane. But the strangest thing is, folks, they use this whole term of cheap grace, again, which is publicly promoting one's own virtue without risking any personal inconvenience. And that's exactly what they're doing with LGBT rights, abortion rights, and transgender rights. These people don't know anyone. At, at least they're not willing to admit that they know anyone who's LGBT. They don't know anyone, at least nobody that they know will admit to them that they've ever had an abortion. And certainly they don't know anybody that's transgender. So they're guilty of cheap grace themselves. Again, publicly promoting their own virtue without risking any personal inconvenience. This is exactly what they're doing. And then folks are suggesting a China Cold War, if you can imagine that. The document says economic engagement with China should be ended, not rethought. And then they've got this asinine example here that they give that I just have to read it to you because, again, these are people that want to be running the country if Donald Trump gets reelected, and they say nighttime satellite images of the Korean Peninsula famously show the free market South lit up with homes, businesses, and cities electrified from coast to coast. By contrast, communist North Korea is almost completely dark except for the small dot of the capital city Pyongyang where a psychotic dictator and his cronies live. The same phenomenon is on display in the infuriating fact that four of the six richest counties in the United States are suburbs of Washington, D.C., a city infamous for its lack of native productive industries, which makes no sense. And of course, they call Obamacare socialism, despite the fact that Obamacare and their voting more than 50 times to try to kill it has actually helped millions and millions of people in the country. They, they still think that's socialism. And ultimately, what they believe in, folks, is trickle-down economics. And they say in the document, in the prologue, by contrast, in countries with a high degree of economic freedom, elites are not in charge because everyone is in charge. People work, build, invest, save, and create according to their own interest and in service to the common good of their fellow citizens. That's what we have today. That's why we have elections. And that's why we're trying to keep the elections free and fair. That's exactly what we have. What they want to have is more of a trickle-down economy where the top 1% get all the tax cuts with the idea that it's just going to trickle down. This came all the way from Ron Reagan, and folks, it didn't work then, and it's not going to work now or any time in the future. And then they had the gall to say this, folks. They said this in their prologue. The next president should crack down on the crony capitalist corruption that enables America's largest corporations to profit through political influence rather than competitive enterprise and customer satisfaction. Crony capitalist corruption. They say that's what we have now. That's, that's what we've got. President should crack down on that. What about this? Jared Kushner used taxpayer money when he traveled to the Middle East to help secure a $2 billion investment in his firm from the Saudi government. What about this? New York Times today. Trump organization signs up to put its brand on a new Saudi tower. The residential high-rise tower in Jeddah is the latest of several developments that the former president's company has planned for the Middle East. What, what about that corruption? What's, what's it going to do? Crack down on that? I mean, so folks, it's a, it's a society 
where they can do whatever the hell they want, and they will, especially with that ruling today, that basically a political action that the president is taking is immune from prosecution. It's just going to be a free-for-all if we let it happen, folks. And that's the key. We don't have to let it happen. We don't have to have power vested in the Department of Justice that reaches into every city of this country that we live in, a situation where they're getting rid of elected officials and putting their own people in, and they're, they're using the intimidation and the power of the Department of Justice, which is going to be five times, if not 10 times, bigger than it is today. We don't have to let this happen, folks. Till next time.